Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. According to a new study published in the Journal of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, breast cancer survivors aren't getting the recommended number of mammograms following surgery. Hmm. The study tracked more than 27,000 patients after breast cancer surgery. One year after surgery, 13% of breast cancer survivors had not followed up with any breast imaging. Even more concerning, only 50% of patients tracked for at least five years followed mammogram screening recommendations. And here to discuss is lead author of the study, Dr. Katherine Ruddy. Dr. Ruddy is the Director of Cancer Survivorship at the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center in Rochester, Minnesota. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Ruddy. It's nice to see you again. Thanks so much for having me. I guess the whole point of this discussion is the fact that a woman who has had breast cancer can have a recurrence. It can come back, can it? It can. How often? So the risk of a cancer coming back or of a new cancer depends on a variety of factors, including things like the original stage of the cancer. The reason to do annual mammograms is really for both purposes, to find cancers that come back and also to find new cancers. Of these 27,000 women, I assume the majority of them had had a lumpectomy and radiation or a lumpectomy and some sort of chemotherapy? Well, we excluded women who had had both breasts removed because those women don't actually need to do any type of routine imaging. No breast tissue left. Exactly. If there's no breast tissue left, there's nothing to image. So our, the patients included in this study were both those who'd had lumpectomy and also those who'd had mastectomy, one breast removed. So really you were looking at the other breast? Exactly. If they'd had one breast removed, then they would be having mammograms on the other breast. Why are breast cancer survivors not coming in for imaging? Well, we really don't fully know all of the reasons. I suspect it's multifactorial. One of the reasons may be just the logistical barriers to getting in and, and getting, you know, getting the appointments and finding time in busy lives to, to do that. I think another potential issue is anxiety around the test. The, ish, the stress of going in for a test that might find a recurrence may be a deterrent for some people. If a woman has had cancer in one breast and has, let's say, a mastectomy on that side, is she more likely than the general popula population to have a cancer in the other breast? The risk of cancer in the other breast is partly related to things like family history. So folks who have a strong family history are more likely to develop breast cancer period to begin with and then also more likely to have a breast cancer on the other side. Certainly we worry more about women who tested positive for certain genetic mutations like the BRCA mutation. For the average risk woman, the breast cancer on the other side after a unilateral mastectomy uh, is not a, not a huge risk, but it is something that we know can happen and we want to find it early if it does. In the group of women who had lumpectomy plus radiation, what percentage of those uh, will end up having a recurrence at some time during their life? That depends on a lot of factors. So age, for example, interestingly, we found that age was predictive of mammograms. And interestingly, younger women were less likely to have the mammograms that they needed. While we know that younger age, first of all, there's more time to have a new breast cancer if you've been diagnosed at age 40 than at age 80. And then also, there is a higher risk of having a second cancer if you were diagnosed at, with breast cancer at a young age. So, so that's a concerning finding of the study. We, um, there, when there's more time to have a new breast cancer developed, that's all the more reason to be having those annual mammograms. I, I know, but is it 10%? Is it 20%? Is it 50%? I mean, it, it, it seems to me like that it needs to enter into the equation. If a woman has had breast cancer, lumpectomy, radiation, and her chances of recurrence are 10% or less, then maybe it's not so important for these follow-up mammograms. I think it's still important, don't get me wrong, but, but how common is it for a woman to have a recurrence after adequate surgical and radiation treatment? Well, as I said, it depends a lot on different factors. So there are women who are diagnosed, for example, at age 85, where their risk may be lower than 10%, and they decide with their doctor not to undergo screening for that reason because they really feel the risk is so low. It's not worth the discomfort. That's another factor that obviously I didn't mention earlier, but mammograms are not the most comfortable thing ever. And so... Did you know that, Dr. Shives? <laughs> I've heard that. Uh -huh. So, so uh, each woman's risk is individual. So it's really 
I don't want to give a, a broad number because it's not going to be applicable to any given person. Each person needs to talk to her doctor about what her individual risk is based on age, based on characteristics of the tumor. So more biologically aggressive tumors have higher risks of local recurrence. Also, um, higher stage, so larger tumors, if there were more lymph nodes involved, there's a higher risk of a local recurrence. I just wonder, what is the time frame that we're talking about here? Because once you're diagnosed with cancer, you've got that five-year window, magical five-year, if you can make it five years without a reoccurrence. I was going back, I didn't have breast cancer, I had lymphoma, but I was going back all the time, first month, then every three months, then every four months, and every six months. So is do breast cancer survivors not get a mammogram every time they come in for their checkup? Is it different for breast cancer survivors? It is. So as you say, the the follow-up visits in some cases are more frequent than the mammogram recommendations. Mm -hmm. Many times women are coming twice a year, for example, for up to five years after diagnosis, and they aren't having the mam. They only are recommended to have the mammogram annually. And why those are not all happening, part we we do know that not everybody, for example, is having those visits. So even if uh, the, mm -hmm. the recommended frequency for the first few years at least is at least twice a year and then for the next few years is at least annually not everyone's able to do those visits we know many of our patients live far away from the site where they were originally treated and it might be difficult to drive five hours to have those visits um, and then there may be other factors co-pays and other things sure. that deter people did the findings in this study surprise you they actually didn't surprise me that much. They were very consistent with what other investigators have found using other databases. So what is the benefit? What, how can this study help clinicians treat patients specifically after their cancer treatment? I hope that it brings attention to the fact that we really need to talk to our patients about these recommendations and not just assume that everyone knows that they should do annual mammograms. The follow-up imaging recommendations for breast cancer are actually simpler than for a lot of other cancers in that we're not recommending routine PET scans or CAT scans or bone scans. The mammogram is, um, the annual mammogram is a lot less than, than other cancer survivors of other cancers are recommended to do. So that doesn't mean we don't need to talk about it. That doesn't mean we don't need to help people coordinate these visits. And, um, and I hope that this being in the literature will increase attention to that. So basically, you have told us that if a woman has a lumpectomy and radiation or whatever treatment, uh, she should have a mammograms biannually, twice a year for the first few years, and then annually thereafter. No. So she should have visits at least annually for the first five years. And for the first few years, guidelines generally recommend between two and three years of at least twice annually visits. Those are not mammograms. Mammograms annually. Okay, and uh, even if you've had that breast removed, you should still have an annual mammogram to check the opposite breast. Exactly, but if you've had both breasts removed, you don't need any breast imaging. All right, the importance of follow-up following a treatment of breast cancer. Uh, so glad you're here. I'm glad to get the information, and hopefully the word will get out that of the importance of having the mammograms post-operatively and post-treatment. Post I hope so. I want to ask one more question that we sure. either will, depending on time, keep in or out. You have been here before to talk about a cancer survivorship plan, and I would think this kind of dovetails very nicely into that. Explain. It really does. So survivorship care plans are documents that explain to a patient what the diagnosis of cancer was, what kind of treatments were given, and then what the follow-up should be. And, and now what? And exactly. <laughs> now what? And for breast cancer survivors, mammograms are really a key part of that now what. And I hope that as we give more survivors these cancer survivorship care plans, we will be able to improve upon these numbers. Great. All right, we've been talking about the importance of follow-up mammography screening for breast cancer survivors with oncologist and the director of the Cancer Survivorship Program at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Katherine Ruddy. Dr. Ruddy, thanks for being with us. Thank you.